Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. I'm going to be dropping a few things into here. This is a, a photo image of the newspaper we'll be going over. Somebody who is not in the room with us tonight, he sent me this. This is a phenomenal article that I want to go over. I, this is the, that's the, just a JPEG image. This is a PDF file. And also, I painstakingly took the script from the Raftsman Journal from January 6, 1858, and I made it into my own PDF. So you guys can choose what you want to look at tonight. I wanted to start by reading this. Again, this is a phenomenal article. I'm hearing somebody else on. They may want to turn off their microphone. So I'm giving you three options here. Also, it is a... Let me see if I could pull it up real quick. I didn't have it ready. No, I don't have it ready. I also made it into an article on my website. But anyways, so this is dated January 6th, 1858. The author's name is a certain S.B. Rowe, and it's stamped in Clearfield, Pennsylvania. Of course, Wednesday, January 6th, 1858. I know very little about the Raftsman Journal. I don't know if this was mainstream or some dude sitting in his attic with a printing press. I'm going to guess that if this is coming out in 1858 from any press, this guy is probably a Freemason. That's just the probable fact here. But I want you guys to think about 1858, what is going on in America. Again, this is in Pennsylvania. They're gearing up for the Civil War. They're gearing up for uh, the John Brown's raid on Harper Ferry. There's you know, a lot of talk about the future of slavery in America. And uh, the first Republican is going to be running for president here very soon, uh, Abraham Lincoln. And then we get articles like this. So this is what it says. It's titled, Antiquities in America. Throughout the entire length and breadth of the country, washed as it is by the waters of two mighty oceans, these guys used to write in such epic language, and abounding in natural resources, enormous beyond what is impossible to conceive, we find much to admire in the aspect and beauty of nature. And whether we travel from the distant shores of Maine and New Brunswick to the golden sands of California, and the shores of the great Pacific, or from the bright crystal lakes of Minnesota to the orange groves of Florida. I could smell the oranges now. We behold throughout the immense extent the features of nature, grand and beautiful in every form and aspect. The mineralogist, the geologist, the naturalist, the botanist, and even the antiquarian have all a rich field here. And he's going to focus here on, he opens it up with this idea of like, you know, like nat you think of like national parks and glorious mountains, but then he's going to focus here on the antiquarian. Strange as it may appear, America abounds in antiquities, so extensive, so beautiful and majestic, as to rival those of Thebes or Nineveh. Well, that's interesting. Uh, ruins of ancient cities of immense extent, fortifications, mounds, and pyramids, temples with walls built of hewn stone, showing a refined taste in architecture, and adorned with human figures beautifully executed. Well, that's weird. Large, <laughs> large altars ornamented with hieroglyphics, probably giving a record of those who reared them, but which no man has been able to decipher. Remains of ancient palaces with beautiful specimens of sculpture and painting, with many other marks of ancient greatness, prove to us that this is not a new world, but that a powerful empire existed at a very remote period of time, teeming with a population highly skilled in arts, and in a state of civilization far beyond anything we have been led to conceive of the Aborigines previous to the discovery of the continent by Europeans. The antiquities of America extend from the eastern shores of Maine and Massachusetts to the Pacific, and from the Great Lakes and British Dominions to Peru and La Plata in South America, in fact, throughout the extents of both continents. Immense forests grow over the ruins of large cities, and the gigantic size of the trees, 
with indications that other generations of trees sprung up and grew before them, proves that the ruins were in existence before the Christian era. In every portion of the United States, interesting ruins have been discovered. In the state of New York, have been found sculptured figures of 100 animals of different species, executed in a style far superior to anything exhibited by any of the existing tribes of Indians. The state of Ohio abounds in ruins of towns and fortifications, with extensive mounds and pyramids. At Marietta and in Missouri, beautiful pottery, silver and copper ornaments, and pearls of great beauty and luster have been dug from the earth. In the caves of Tennessee and Kentucky, mummies have been found. I found that pretty interesting. In a high state of preservation, clothed with cl cloths and skins of various texture, inlaid with feathers. Like discoveries have been made at uh, Carrollton near Milwaukee in the state of Wisconsin, ruins of huge fortifications appear. Similar ruins appear in the state of Missouri. On the south side of the Missouri River in the western portion of the state is an enclosure of some 500 acres, which includes the ruins of a building, no doubt ancient tower, with walls over 100 feet high and 80 feet wide at the base attached to which are a redoubt at and citadel with work uh, excuse me with work much resembling the structure of a tower in Europe but it is in the south of mexico that magnificent and beautiful ruins present themselves in abundance ruins of majestic cities and magnificent temples and altars with beautiful work of sculpture of sculpture tastefully wrought places with paintings Colors chiefly sky blue and light green, which show by their richness and elegance to be the work of highly cultivated people. These ruins, majestic and beautiful in appearance, but overgrown with thick forests of mahogany and cedar of immense dimensions and great age, proved to the world that a great empire existed here at a very remote period of time, and that this empire teemed with an immense population, a people skilled in the mechanical arts and an advanced state of cultivation. The most extensive ruins are to be found at, um, I guess you pronounce that, Yuxmol and Palenque uh, in the southeast of Mexico. At, uh, at Uxmol are immense pyramids coated with stone and quadrangular stone edifices and terraces. The highest of these pyramids is 130 feet, and on the summit it supports a temple. On one of the facades of the temple are four human figures, cut in stone, with great exactness and elegance. The hands are crossed upon the breast, the head is covered with something like a helmet, about the neck is a garment of the skin of an alligator, and over each body is a figure of a death's head and bones. At Palenque, a city of great extent, are immense ruins with the remains of a royal palace. One temple, that of Copan, 520 feet by 650, and supposed to have been as large as St. Peter's at Rome. Another temple of great dimension is here, having an entrance by a portico 100 feet long and 10 feet broad. It stands on an elevation of 60 feet. The pillars of the portico are adorned with hieroglyphics and other devices. Different objects of worship have been found, representations of the gods who were worshipped in this country. These temples, with 14 large buildings and many other objects of curiosity, stand here as monuments of ancient greatness to remind us of the remote origin of a mighty empire. The city has been described as the Thebes of America, and travelers have supposed that it must have been 60 miles in circumference and contained a population of 3 million souls. Centuries, mut, mut, uh, excuse me. Centuries must have elapsed. And dynasties succeeded each other before such orders of architecture were introduced, and a great length of time must have passed before an empire would become sufficiently powerful to erect such temples and possess a city of such vast extent. In looking back to the past, we feel interested in the imagination that this people, once in the noonday of glory, enjoying all the fruits and luxuries of an advanced civilization. But when we behold these ruins, a melancholy reflection must at once seize our minds. On the ground where once nations met in their strength and power, 
wild beasts now roam, and venomous serpents win their way. And over these vast cities, where once the busy hum of industry and the voice of merriment resounded, grows the vast cedar. In this country is exhibited the largest pyramid in the world, that of Colula near Puebla. It covers 41 acres and is 200 feet high. On its summit was a temple, and in the interior has been discovered a vault, roofed with beams of wood, containing skeletons and idols. Several smaller pyramids surrounded this larger one. It appears to have been formed by cutting a hill into an artificial shape. Its dimensions are immense, being nearly three miles in circumference and about 400 feet high. It is divided into, into terraces and slopes, covered with platforms, stages, and uh, bastions, elevated one above the other, and are formed with large stones skillfully cut and jointed with cement. In some respects, the style of architecture resembles the Gothic, being massive and durable, while in other respects it resembles the Egyptian, yet the general construction manner and style of architecture is different from anything hitherto described in the world. In Egypt, hieroglyphics on stone denote remarkable events, which no one has yet been able to decipher. A dark shade rests on the antiquities of America, and a few rays of light enliven the gloom. We have ancient history to inform us of the events of Egypt, how that empire was founded and how it prospered and fell. We have the same record of Babylon, Nineveh, Greece, Rome, and Carthage. But not the least information have we relative to those who erected these cities, what people and whence they came, not a ray of light to dispel the dark gloom which seems to rest on the earliest history of America. Architecture, sculpture, painting, and all the arts that adorn civilized life have flourished in this country at a period far remote. There is evidence sufficient to prove that these cities were in ruins at least sixteen or eighteen hundred years ago, and Palenque are the remains of an altar over which grows an immense cedar whose powerful roots enshrine it. The whole city is overgrown with mahogany and cedar trees of enormous size. The concentric circles of some of these trees, the well-known circles uh, cycles for a year, have been counted, which show there, they were more than 800 years old. And there were indications of another generation of trees having sprung up, sprung up before them. How few reflect on the fact that America is an old dominion, the seat of an ancient, mighty empire. These facts are themselves every day to the eyes of the astonished world. And it is to be hoped that the spirit of inquiry, which seems at present to animate all classes of learned men, may throw light on the early history of this remarkable region. So I don't know what you guys thought about that. I found that to be a fascinating article coming out in 1858 at a time when the Smithsonian is really coming to fruition. We're seeing that in just a couple years, in three years' time, the Civil War is going to begin and they're going to start burning down a lot of old cities in America. Now, I confess that some of what he talked about in South America, the Mexico region, wasn't as impressive because we already know these structures exist, the pyramids and so on and so forth, which he's describing. What he does talk about, though, which really um, set off some bells in my head, is that he's talking about how these appear to be have been deserted for at least 800 years, maybe up to 1,600 years. This big span of time that they were deserted, and they were seeing that these trees were growing over them, which you know when they were cutting them down, they were finding them to be like 800 years old. So that's really interesting because if we look at this article closely, I think he's describing two things. And this is what I'm trying to get through to you know, over and over again to a lot of people that we're actually looking at multiple different timelines. When the Millennial Kingdom was ushered in, Babylon was destroyed, right? So we're going to look all over the world. We're going to see the ruins of ancient Babylon with its idols and so on and so forth. The idols should have been all destroyed. Now, maybe they weren't able to get to all of, all of them. But I feel like what he's describing here with Central America and Mexico, uh, Mexico, South America, I don't think he really goes down to South America, but is that we're seeing a culture of people that vanished at a time long before 
and it was rediscovered, and it, it was mysterious. But then he talks about a lot of stuff in America that he's like, guys, this existed before the Europeans got here, and we have these buildings and other things like that. Now, he's not going into it like what we look at with the mud flood today and, and, and so on and so forth, but I almost feel like they're just laying it out there and saying, like, look, these, there are these cities, these buildings, these castles, uh, temples. He talks about temples. They existed, and we kind of just moved into them. So I just wanted to pass that by you. I thought that was a phenomenal little article. Did anyone have any thoughts on it before I move on? Yeah, I think it's very telling uh, with the the comments he's making, uh, like like the south of the Missouri, Missouri River. You know, there in, in five hundred acres, it's talking about there's ruins of, of a building, uh, ancient tower with walls over a hundred feet high. You know, where where is that in our history books? Right, it's not there anymore. Yeah, and like like to your point, the Civil War starts all of this destruction comes because they you know there has to be a cleaning up of this history in order for a new one to take over and he talks in here about the the mummies they were finding in caves in kentucky and if you if anyone here has looked into the history of mummies in america it, and giants it's really fascinating how in the 1800s all over from new york to michigan down to florida uh, all, all the way out in California, they are taking up mummies everywhere, like giant mummies. And they have usually red hair, uh, sometimes blonde hair, blue eyes. Uh, they're adorned in crowns and jewels, and they're, they're buried. And when they would dig them up, you know, the Smithsonian would beep, 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 back at that truck, put them in, you'd never see them again. So here you're, you're seeing someone writing about these things, some things that we can't described today like again we could we know that the pyramids are down there uh which he appeared to be describing a little, little bit but a lot of the stuff we we don't have any history on this anymore it's gone <laughs>